And a man there swoons his white stripe, but with his goody two shoes. Uh, what year was that? I went 83. Uh, Mr. Rimmer has gone 81. Oh, what going about you two? 82. Just because I'm with you. In the middle. Yeah. 82. Yeah. 82. Yeah. 82. Okay. Yes. All right. So Wayne, how was your New Year? And your Christmas it was very good. Was yeah. Market. Christmas was lovely. Relaxed. I didn't leave the house for about three days, so for Christmas was lovely. Were you on drinks family. duty? No, I was behaving myself. It was just me, Karen, and my oh. girls. So. No just, eggnog. No, no. I, no, actually, I did an eggnog uh, in the morning. Okay. And then forgot to drink it, so oh. I did it later on. But still there, isn't it? No, no. I'm finished <laughs> now. So, so no. you're good, you're good to about a new phenomenon. Yeah, well, it's kind of been bubbling on the surface the last five years. Gin's had a bit of a resurgence. Really? And away from your usual suspects, you've got more and more gins hitting the market. Now, you can see some here, which are pretty new brands, say. They've been around for a couple of years now, but uh, the growing stature of the category is really booming. And what's the difference between Because I know sometimes you have a gin and you'll have something like um, cucumber in it, and sometimes you'll have citrus yeah. seeds in it. The... People are trying to use citrus peel, citrus fruits, cucumber. You've got celery bitters out now. It's a bit like changing the kind of, to complement the kind of botanical characteristic of gin, because it's based upon like citrus fruits and spices and roots. The medicinal, isn't it, Jim? It traditionally was made as a, med as a medicinal spirit. What are you laughing at? Yeah. But well, we've got one that you've got, like, for instance... It's my medicine, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Example, if you look Good here, knowledge. we've got a we've got, um, bit, bit of a tour, actually, around London and also Spain. We've got one from Hammersmith, we've got one from Battersea, one from Hoxton, this one's from Spain, this one's from Highgate, up near wow. me, and this one's from St James in Mayfair. Nothing from Chelsea. So, <laughs> Nothing with Chelsea yet. Batches is close. That's it's got SW4, it'll be all right. Warning grapefruit and coconut. Why the warning? <laughs> Just because, because it's very it's different. Because it's 43% volume alcohol. It's 43 alcohol warning. It's, it's going to surprise you because you wouldn't you technically think about things like coconut being used as a extra um, flavour in gin. A bit like when some people use cucumber and rose and other products as well. So people are having gin and tonics, but they're also having cocktails. Yeah. Gin, gin cocktails, For me, I've got right. a couple of old school gin cocktails because there's been a bit of an interest I've noticed lately in film and TV with the Victorian era. And people are harking back to them days. And you see now a lot of old drinks appearing again from the old gin palace days. Yeah. This one is called Gin and French and could be the precursor even a dry martini. This goes back to the kind of mid, like, you know, 19th century, pretty much in London, the old gin palace. Right. You know, a real haven for the working class. It's the only kind of, I guess, uh, grandeur they experience was these beautiful places with gilt mirrors, etched glass, marbles, nice. tiles. Yeah. You know, now there's only nice. very few preserved examples in London at the moment, you know, you, you can find. So this one, we're going to use some number three gin from Mayfair, followed by some French wine aperitif. We've got some Lillette. Is going in. You can use dry vermouth, but I like the little. So this is sweet wine. This is basically a wine aperitif. It's right, made okay. fruit and a little bit of um, aromatics to it I as well. You're going to neck that. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, interesting oh. enough, like James Bond had his first martini, the Vespa martini, with vodka, gin, and lilette. Oh, not really? dry vermouth, yeah. So we're going to stir this up. Gin and French, port and lemon. Gin and French. Yeah. I love it. You know, <laughs> it's a good drink to ask for, isn't it? I'll have the gin and French. The Americans gave us the martini American. and really dressed it up. And interesting enough, this probably wouldn't have been served, you know. Like this would have been quite rustic in the glass, maybe no ice, because even ice in the mid uh, 19th century Victorian days, that was quite a de um, luxury as well yeah. to get ice. Yeah. So you would just, just well, even just come out of the barrel, even. They, they couldn't afford the lecky. <laughs> 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 but it's all gas, it's all gas stamps yeah. as well. So a little twist of lemon, that's it, gin and French. That is amazing. simple and delicious, equal quantities. Really lovely drink. Is it a proper drink? Oh, it's a proper, proper drink. Proper drink. Just, just alcohol. It really is. If oh. you use dry of the French oh, yeah, dry vermouth, it will have a certain different dryness to it. That's really nice, isn't <laughs> it's it? It's really strong. It's really isn't nice, it? though. It's, 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 it's a proper well. cocktail. Mm. It's like we're saying about I the. I feel like I'm in the olden days. It's like we're saying about like <laughs> the, the <laughs> port and brandies. Like <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm what I've got in here was two large heaped teaspoons of caster sugar, yeah. an organic egg white. I'm just going to fluff it up. Because this is basically a silver gin fizz. Gin fizz is a classic gin, lemon, sugar, soda. This one's got the egg white, it's called silver fizz. If you use yogurt, it's golden fizz. And it's all variation. But this is a big drink in America in the Victorian days. But it comes from the old Tom Collins, which originated oh, obviously here Tom in London. Collins. So we've got this one here. We're going to use some gin from Highgate. So we have a large measure of that. Won't be shy. <laughs> then we've got our lemon. Now, we're going to squeeze this lemon juice in. So you could, half of the lemon is going to give you about 50 ml, a nice tablespoon. Lemon juice. And lemon syrup. Very alkalizing, Wayne. Good very cleansing. Good for you, yeah. Very good, very good. Yeah, very cleansing. <laughs> All good for your detox. <laughs> yeah, Lift perfect. it with a bit of soda as well, you know, nothing like a bit of water. A bit of hydration. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a good shake. Really fluff up that egg white. And then we're going to just... No ice. This is the thing about a gin fizz. It goes straight into a glass, a nice tumbler with no ice. I'm going to put the husk of the lemon in there. I like it nice and rustic. You get the oil from the lemon has all been pressed out. 
As I pour this over, just break your lemon down a little bit. Can you see it's got that kind of fluffy texture. Now we're going to give it a little carbonation with soda water. And it's as simple as that. And that's a silver yeah. gin fizz. It's and like a my mouth's open. It's yeah. 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 <laughs> and they say with these drinks well, something like that, you've got, you got, you got to drink it while it's laughing at you. Oh. <laughs> 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 So you drink that, do you? Oh, that's very funny. It's like lemonade, eh? <laughs> that, you, I mean, that's too easy to drink, Wayne. It's an eye-opener. Does not even taste oh, wow, like alcohol. Wow, really good, Nice simple classic. Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't tell us that. All right, thanks, Wayne. Pleasure. You can get all of uh, his cocktail recipes by logging onto our website, bbc.co.uk slash something for the weekend. Now, the journey moves on as we discover more about the Italian island in Sicily unpacked.